ನಮೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆವಿನ್ ಕೊಪ್ಪ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ದ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ವಿಸಿಟರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಗ್ರೀಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಹರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಮಿತ್ರ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಹರ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ನೇಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಲವ್ ಹಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಹರ್ ಮೀರಾ ಮೀರಾ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ right so uh, here we are um, i mean we are going to just uh, have a little discussion with her regarding her experience over here in india and uh, with uh, meditation practices and uh, just uh, brief things about indian um, culture uh, in the presence of uh, swami ji all right so so the first things so uh, we just want to understand your you know overall experience mm-hmm. you know uh, in india right mm-hmm. so uh, i'm sure in india you have come across uh, you know lot many gods and so many temples mm-hmm. and many yes. different gods i have mm-hmm. heard that in greece also there are you know something mm-hmm. uh, similar you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. Uh, it is like there are so many gods right how do you find mm-hmm. it see what is happening in india right now like uh, the ancient culture is still prevalent in greece the ancient culture is not that prevalent anymore mm-hmm. right now christianity is mainly mm-hmm. prevalent mm-hmm. and in the whole western society mm-hmm. but what used to be in the ancient greek mm-hmm. culture really correlates so deeply mm-hmm. with ancient indian mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. culture okay. it means not only the ancient uh, mm-hmm. indian language like mm-hmm. sanskrit language mm-hmm. with ancient greek language mm-hmm. resonates mm-hmm. similarly the yes. same words also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i got to know it only here that there is such connection mm-hmm. but also the uh, series of gods that used to be mm-hmm. uh, worshiped Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. about light about wind about the sea about all elements mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. similarly exist mm-hmm. in india mm-hmm. um and also you will find certain places in greece mm-hmm. where lingams are oh that only okay. recently i discovered mm-hmm. although i had visited these places as a young mm-hmm. you know a mm-hmm. little child mm-hmm. only now i got to know what mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. what a lingam mm-hmm. they used to be there huh? a certain like um uh as, let's say like a uh, deity uh mm-hmm. used to um download information and give to the warriors mm-hmm. uh, are they going to win a battle or not mm-hmm. huh? and people mm-hmm. were going there and they will take the the certain thing called chrism it mm-hmm. means she will be absorbed in meditation mm-hmm. okay and she will not show her face mm-hmm. Hmm? Mm-hmm. her name was pithia she okay. will not show her face mm-hmm. these people should get into a cleansing process before they even come closer mm-hmm. to the temple mm-hmm. and then she will do certain things to the linga mm-hmm. and after that she will announce you know mm-hmm. that you are going to win or you have to go there you have to do that mm-hmm. something like that but never they show her face okay because she was in silence and inside uh-huh. there are other places also where transcendental uh states uh, took place to many people mm-hmm. they were underground like caves huh mm-hmm. there is certain kind of mysticism used mm-hmm. to exist there people go through def- different stages first they clean the body then they clean the mind and mm-hmm. they would use certain technology mm-hmm. which somehow will alter their perception mm-hmm. like you know flashes on and off and very high technology for that ancient times mm-hmm. they have recently discovered mm-hmm. huh mm-hmm. so they would go underground in darkness and they will feel they're going downwards or although they're going upwards and opposite things mm-hmm. so they their perception mm-hmm. would change and then after that they would be in front of the statue of mother mm-hmm. there was the dimitra statue which is my name <laughs> because it was the mother uh, uh, of earth and fertility yes. Yes. the one that engulfs all creation mm-hmm. so they would do certain things in front of that mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. certain people and these people that would go through this process are very limited mm-hmm. and all the ancient greek philosophers mm-hmm. and uh, whoever you know as illuminated beings that they have written so many things and brought light in the world mm-hmm. they have gone through such processes mm-hmm. when you go there and you're sensitive enough you know that something very profound happened there wonderful yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful so now um, 
Back in the ashram, you know, I heard from you that you have traveled uh, to a lot many places in India as well, right? I mean, yes. a lot many yes. ashrams, so many temples, yes. so yeah. a lot many things. But then coming to here at um, Bebin Kopa and mm -hmm. ashram and being in the premise here, you know, in the ashram shrine and, you know, with the you know, discussions with the Swamiji and experience yes, with yes. him, a lot of discussions, right? And with all these things, your meditative experience and everything, uh, overall, how do you find it and how different is it yes, uh, yes. from rest places? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, first of all, when you <laughs> come closer to Shamiji and you get to see him, yes. directly Ananda rises within me. <laughs> that happens. Um, and as for the place, I never expected I would be here. Mm -hmm. The things happened in a very, like, um, yeah, really unexpected way. And uh, then I land here. <laughs> I have come to twice. Uh, every time my experience has been different. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, first, I was uh, initiated to all areas somehow and I go to sit in all places and especially uh, having intense experience down to this cave where all these thousands of uh, rishis have been connected with that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there I would say that uh, extremely profound experience came within me and I, I felt that we are not separate. Mm -hmm. Everything comes is within. Huh? Mm -hmm. It rises within. Mm -hmm. huh? So um, later on, yeah, I sat also with Swamiji in silence uh, at the Mahayog pit, and um, then he gives the Shakti path. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that was also a great uh, experience. Uh, but I would like to talk about this place, mm -hmm. because I have lived also the previous time I used to stay here at Chidakasha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Chidakasha and the cave which is inside, uh, one can really um, discover that what he is, is apparent uh, uh, never, never ending light, yes. uh, which engulfs you, and you are that, and uh, Nityananda. Mm -hmm. What is Nityananda apparently? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that which encompasses ecom all, mm -hmm. engulfs all. Mm -hmm. What is in creation and what is before that? Mm -hmm. What is light and what is before even light? Mm -hmm. What is sound and what is before even sound? Mm -hmm. So that ultimate silence resides within. Then your mind gradually, you know, slows down. And then you uh, allow that which you are to really rise within you and realize it. Yeah. So um, now at my second visit, huh? uh, at my second visit everything has been different. It's been, I would say that the time was exactly nine months after my first visit. And uh, now I'm mainly staying uh, in silence at Mahayog Pit. There, uh, I would say that that side of the ashram, you know, it's like the grace of all the gurus. Somehow you are discovering there a guidance, an inner guidance, without even, um, you know, without even putting your mind into anything. Huh? You don't need to really, um, you know, try to, to, to uh, think of a person that stands there in any photo or in any statue or anything. You just sit there in silence. And what uh, the essence of what these beings have been, you discover they are within you. It means uh, they are very alive, they have always been alive. <laughs> the body is just, you know, um, it's just an appearance yes. that comes for a you know, single life in that form, just to show to people mm -hmm. uh, so that they understand maybe, uh, maybe they connect better in a humanly way. But when they are no more, Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then uh, this energy, uh, what they are, it just mixes with Paramatma, whatever it exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it comes to each and every person in a different way and it guides them individually. Mm -hmm. Whatever they need, mm -hmm. if they are open and mm -hmm. if they are in seek of that truth, then what they need, mm -hmm. that will happen. You know the same thing will happen to you or to me yes. or to Shamaji or to anybody. Yes. Different, different. So that's my main experience, and um, I saw somehow that uh, you know 
Shivam feels uh, Chaitananda Swamiji and uh, all the beings said even like um, Tathatreya, Mahaguru, <laughs> also resides within us. So, uh, if you would ask me, like uh, four or five years ago, mm -hmm. anything about yoga, about gurus, about the existence of any of these beings, I was totally ignorant. I knew nothing at all, at all. Certain experience within somehow made me connect with India and directly come here at the right time and everything was arranged for me to come. And my whole trip, even the first trip and the second, has been arranged in a way that gradually I get to know what is needed for me. So, in that way, here also, I discovered that beings like Shivam Tirth Maharaj, Chaitananda Swamiji, um, the Devi, Bala. Bala, yes, and uh, other beings that they are uh, presented everywhere, which I have never seen, I have never read anything about them, and nor I am able apparently right now <laughs> to read anything or study anything somehow. Uh, while I have been meditating, and uh, after my deep meditation, I was drawn towards them. I was drawn towards the photos, but it's not the photo that is drives me, right? It's it's the deepest energy of them, uh, which is in me. Mm -hmm. huh? So certain connection has been happening, and uh, I have been forced to sit under the photo of Shivam Tith mm -hmm. and um, going deeper, Diana. But if you ask me more to start talking, I will fall in silence. <laughs> You see, the incredible thing here is like, uh, I never asked Swamiji any question, and he never gave me any answer, <laughs> and he never ever told me anything, like, um, you know, to resolve anything within me. Yeah. Everything what he says is apparently what's happening, that everything is within you. Just sit there and meditate, or sit in silence. What is meditation in the end? What is the mediator and the meditation? Nothing. Just sit. Simple. That's all. You close your eyes. Enough. Nothing to think of. No image to have to medi to be mediator. Is there any mediator between you and you? Can never be a mediator. Yes. So it's direct connection. That's how it happens. Um, yes. So this is the essence of this place. This is the uh, what really Swamiji is uh, trying to convey naturally to everybody being here uh, by the grace of Nityananda. Mm -hmm. Which is resides within him, within you, within me, within everybody. Yes, yes. that's it. <laughs> Basically, mm -hmm. there is nothing to do here, it's just happening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. So, meditation is not even like a sadhana. That you are going there like uh, habitually or you are doing like certain routine. Huh? After some time, this uh, comes to you naturally. You might be anywhere. You might be inside the cave with open eyes. You might be with closed eyes. You might be anywhere walking, somewhere. And then you get it and you feel you want just to silence down and sit. And that comes and covers you totally. You are immersed in silence. That's Diana. Then everything else is forgotten. Mm -hmm. So it's not for everybody to, to feel that something, you know, has you have to put force on anything. Apparently you have to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Not put force in anything. Let everything come. Let allow everything to happen naturally. You know, naturally yes. it happens naturally. naturally. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we have been uh, listening a lot of music with each other as well. And I know you love music very well. And then you have uh, been trained in Western music also. And you know Indian classical music also very well. You have played a lot of instruments yes, over yes, here. Yes. So, would you want to talk a little bit about you know, music? And, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I experienced for many, many years, uh, either in studies or by self, you know, um, like uh, interest. Uh, music where I have been, in mm -hmm. different uh, countries, not only in Greece, in Denmark. Uh, the classical uh, style uh, taught it has some, some strict rules. 
after certain level, mm -hmm. when I was, you know, uh, opening up my system and, you know, breathing exercises a lot to perform in a kind of an operatic style, mm -hmm. then uh, I started feeling that I am not going to become an opera singer <laughs> and I am not going to follow certain rules because something was telling me that certain improvisation, certain like intuition will uh, uh, come to me. Mm -hmm. So after some experimentation in Denmark and with certain groups about, uh, you know, sitting in silence with, uh, uh, in darkness even, certain sounds start, started arising within me. Mm -hmm. So when I came to India, mm -hmm. how could I be uh, separate from what is happening here? I started mm -hmm. experiencing and getting in contact with a uh, very good Carnatic musician. One of them is Maishal Manjunath and his brother Maishal Nagaraj. Mm -hmm. Where in an amazing way, mm -hmm. uh, unexpectedly, I was invited to live with them mm -hmm. and experience deeply what Carnatic music is. I even took the tambura, mm -hmm. 200, 300 year old, and mm -hmm. I started playing and then wow. I would directly feel the energy of the sound rising within me and taking different patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, Maestro Manjunath also, I have very big gratitude to him. He uh, directly played to me Saraswati Raga. Mm -hmm. When he played that to me, extreme bliss, tears and happiness came within me. Then I got to know what Carnatic music is. But my question to him from the very beginning was, how far music can take you to your spiritual upliftment mm -hmm. and what is beyond sound? What is beyond that? Yes. When does it end? Yes. And then he told me this is my whole life. That's why I'm playing. And that's what I want for people. So Carnatic music, it's like, it's not just, a, and ancient Indian music, Hindustani also, it's not just a sound. It's, a, it's really the sound within which rises, takes certain forms. Huh? These forms are not different from the deity forms that you think. They are also yes. vibrant in the same sounds. Mm -hmm. So what is Saraswati Raga? Apparently she bringing the, that form of sound within you. And you become that with this experience. You understand? Yes. And then I go to know all these things. And um, yeah, then uh, later on in Rishikesh also, I attended a special course um, on uh, Dayananda Saraswati um, compositions. Uh, among them a song, uh, uh, Shiva Shambo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the more I was there trying to sing, the more I could not sing anymore. Mm -hmm. So gradually, the sound, its purpose it is to go over the sound, to go beyond the sound wow. and reach the point where Sound ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this grace here in India, but it's not only in India. Uh, I want to tell that this is within you, wherever you are, wherever you are. Maybe in India you get remembered of certain things, huh? or maybe you have some connection anyways that you discover. That's why you are here. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, if you are and uh, you allow this to rise within you, you will see the sounds will come directly out of your mouth without expecting it. These mm -hmm. notes that they are there are not random notes. Sarekamu huh? mm -hmm. Badanisa, or Dorim Fasola Sido, or this Pabu uh, Gadi Kizonin, the Byzantine style, which is chanted now in the Christian mm -hmm. uh, Orthodox. Uh, there are sounds that are already within us. Mm -hmm. um, mm, Yes, there, there are, um, the sounds are just uh, levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You are rising up in consciousness, yes. means you are expanding, you are developing. So that's what sound does. That's mm -hmm. what sound is mm -hmm. and what is not. Yes. <laughs> because stillness ultimately is what is, no? Yes. Then, then slight movement happens mm -hmm. and sound comes and takes forms. Mm -hmm. And takes forms, takes geometries, takes patterns. Mm -hmm. take the form of the deities or take the form of the whole creation anyways, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, is like the grass, different from anything else? No. Mm -hmm. How it took form from what? What is it? Is that same essence. That stillness is already there also. <laughs> Everywhere. Beautiful. Yeah. 
So now, uh, um, like finally, you know, um, what would you like to tell to other sadhaks also about uh, you know overall your experience with the ashram and Swamiji mm -hmm. and what other sadhaks can expect and what is it that a sadhak can do here? No, yes. See, when there is a sincere pull from within to uh, discover and uh, unveil who you really are, uh, then this burning definitely will bring you to this place mm -hmm. or a place connected to this certain uh, energy. So, um, uh, people that are coming here, uh, they should come with no expectation. Mm -hmm. They should come free. They should come with open heart and open mind. Meaning, <laughs> that mind that can dissolve also <laughs> in the process. Because people um, uh, all the time have some structure in their mind that uh, certain process should be followed, certain respect should be followed, certain methods should be followed, and what I do next, and they need some all the time to have some security to cover up uh, maybe some worries or anything that is there in them. But uh, coming here, at the presence of Swamiji, <laughs> what any way will bring uh, up the happiness within them, then the worries gradually will dissolve. They have to stay for some time. Mm -hmm. They should not just rapidly come and go, like, you know, sometimes pilgrims do this very fast right yes. trip. <laughs> Reach this place, then go to that place, then go to that place, and go to that place, and take more, and take more from that, and take more, and grab this bibuti, and grab that bibuti, and you know, all these things, you know? And do this puja to that place, do that, do this, and this will change them. No. That will bring more disturbance in the mind. They come here free. Happy. The nature is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. They listen to so amazing variety of birds and sounds. Like it's like a, a you know, a mm -hmm. choir itself is like music orchestra yes. around. <laughs> they just come and absorb the place as it is, purely as it is. They just sit casually with Shamiji. Whatever they have as question, it will come out of their mouth, mm -hmm. and the answer will be given back to them naturally, mm -hmm. either by the words or by no words yes. it will be given yes. they will get some clarity uh? mm -hmm. and then gradually um, uh, that which is for them mm -hmm. uh, in a unique way will start happening and then they will uh, they will see that they will start seeing mm -hmm. the, the within mm -hmm. you know uh, so yeah what I would say to people that have uh, to keep this strong fire burning within them Yes. For um, that which uh, mm -hmm. you know ever expanding within them, and then when the time comes and they are brought here, just allow everything to happen naturally. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm also surprised to see you, you know, um, getting adjusted to this place. I mean, because the water, food, and the you know, the entire place itself is quite different, right, in terms of uh, yeah. Yeah. everything. Oh. So, uh, but I see you that, you know, you are so very well adjusted. How does it feel? Well, uh, everything is provided. Uh, I'm so grateful about that. And I think that should happen to everybody that wants to concentrate to something deeper within. They should not worry about uh, the basic everyday, you know, things and uh, to be offered. Yes. I'm adjusting very well. Yes, I see that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, naturally you adjust. I don't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe in my uh, country there are different habits, there are different, you know, mm -hmm. different food, uh, everything. But also I have traveled quite much, so in each place I'm going, I have to adjust to that culture, to that attitude. Huh? Mm -hmm. So here also in the ashram, I'm just feeling fine. <laughs> I'm feeling very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, these were all the bit of uh, questions that we had for you. Yes. And uh, we are very happy to have you here. Yeah. And it's it's wonderful experience <laughs> and journey with you. you <laughs> so very happy. And we would love to, you know, uh, yeah. extend our yeah, love and gratitude. Yes. And we want to have you here. <laughs> I, I, I feel the same. Thank you. <laughs> no,